Good morning YouTube, it's Unfrequented World Photography and we're up bright and early this morning to try out a new toy I got yesterday. My 500mm reflex uh, mirror lens. It's a Tamron 55BB is the model. So it's 500 millimeters. it's an old manual lens and it's uh, got a mirror in it. So it's a little bit different than shooting with a conventional lens. But I thought we'd head down to the local marsh here this morning just on the walkway and see if there's any birds we can try. And I took a bunch of shots with it yesterday and we'll give this thing a bit of a review. Well, along the way here, we've got some nice pink blossoms up there in the tree. And uh, we'll uh, take a shot of those and I'll put all these pictures in here for you guys uh, with the distances in there as well. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about the advantages of a mirror lens. And uh, right here, the lens is only four inches long. So if you guys have seen my other videos where I'm carrying my uh, 300 2.8, it weighs seven pounds, it's about nine inches long, um, and then it has a hood that's another five inches long. This lens here is very light. Um, we'll put up the stats at the bottom of the screen here, um, but you don't even feel it. Um, I could carry this, you know, with my camera as about a pound, you know, so I could carry that for a week and it wouldn't hurt me at all. Um, the uh, lens hood is metal, it's about another three and a half, four inches onto the end of the lens. I have a 1.4 Kenko converter on here and we're shooting on a Sony a77 II which is an APS-C camera so this lens although it's a 500 millimeter will shoot at 750 field of view on this camera okay so then we're gonna add another times 1.4 which brings us up to 1050 millimeters uh, field of view with this combination okay and I've got lots of test samples I took yesterday uh, this is a Tamron SP so it's a superior Tamron lens it's an oldie um, but a goodie okay guys there's some uh, cherry blossoms uh, in the morning sun you can see I'm using focus peaking to help with this uh, manual lens to get everything in focus and they're about 15 feet up there in a tree um, off the path, so we can bring them right in with the uh, 500. So if we look at the end of the lens, guys, this is where we see um, the different design um, of this type of lens. It actually uses mirrors, so it has uh, quite a bit less glass inside of it than a conventional lens but there are uh, disadvantages and advantages to this type of design the advantages we've already talked about are size and weight um, the disadvantage is that the out of focus backgrounds the bokeh gives you um, that circular image there that's falling on the back mirror that's what you're going to see in all of your out of focus areas is a lot of circles and you guys will see that in the um, samples that I put in this video. The other thing that this lens doesn't do uh, that a conventional lens does is it has no aperture. It's just an f8 lens. So we need really good sunlight to use this lens or in modern age we can use a camera that has a really outstanding ISO. Yesterday uh, the first sample images I took with this it was actually gray and kind of rainy and you guys will see that I um, they turned out all right. They're uh, not a hundred percent detail that I would like in, in my images because I had to use such a high ISO. And I was using about a thousand ISO yesterday, which is okay, but um, it's not like a 100 or 200 ISO where you get that full detail. Something that's often overlooked with these lenses are that they close focus. This lens will focus down to uh, six feet and when we're at six feet, you're going to have a magnification ratio of one to 3.5, okay? And if we throw a two times teleconverter on there, you're going to have one to 1 1.75. So almost macro um, capabilities. And I think one of the um, areas that this lens will excel for me is in butterfly photography. Lots of people say, why do we need uh, macro when shooting a long lens like this? Well there's a perfect example when I'm out in the field chasing butterflies you can't get within you know five or six feet 
and my normal 7400 that I use doesn't reproduce a, uh, a ratio of that. Um, I do have a 2 times Kenko 300 which I can easily throw on there and then we're going to reproduce 1.75 macro shots of butterflies. So I think this is where I'm going to use this lens is uh, ducks out on the river and butterflies. Okay guys, I wanted to show you some uh, backlit leaves and when I was setting that shot up I noticed here's a good example of the rings that we're talking about out of focus areas. See those white rings? Those are out of focus areas in the image. So as I come into focus, there's the leaves we were going to shoot. Anything that has a white highlight on it, if it's out of focus, will shoot like that. So you've got to watch. It can be used very creatively, but it can also ruin a shot. Okay, the focusing ring on this uh, lens, guys, has about a 360 degree throw on it, so you can get very fine adjustments. There it goes all the way. Um, as well, I'll mention that I haven't seen any flare issues or chromatic aberration, really, uh, at all. I haven't seen any at all. So, uh, both of those are well taken care of with this mirror design. Most of you probably know a thing or two about these Adaptol lenses. Um, it's a Tamron proprietary system and it, what it does is it allows you to change the converter on the end so that you can use these lenses on any uh, DSLR that you own. You just buy the proper adapter and away you go. So I can actually take this lens and put it on a Nikon or a Canon or anything I want. And that's one of the great things about these old lenses is their versatility. Lots of guys own more than one camera. I've taken the lens off and I just wanted to show you the adapter I use to attach it to the Sony a77 II has a chip on it and that makes the camera read the lens as a 50 millimeter 1.7 aperture lens but that's fine because what it does is it allows the stabilization to be turned on in the camera and in all of my testing it doesn't matter what lens you have on there as long as it's chipped it will give full stabilization with the Sony camera. The other thing to note is that inside the back of this 500 millimeter lens is a normal clear 30 millimeter Tamron filter. It's um, part of the optical equation for this lens and in the first version of this lens, the 55B, it actually came with a set of colored filters you could put in there for black and white photography. Um, but with this lens it only came with the clear 30 millimeter filter and that should be left in place all the time. Alright guys, so I found a little nest of uh, webworms here and I thought let's just do a little video sample. Um, so we, we actually get an additional crop with the A77 when shooting video. So we're out over uh, you know 1400 millimeters here shooting right now. So it does a really good job. You need a very sturdy tripod when shooting that far. I just put my hand on the lens and you can see uh, you can see the whole image move. I just wanted to adjust focus a little bit. So essentially all only thing you're going to get video wise with this is have the tripod set up and already focused and press go. Because if you touch the tripod, I'll put my hand back on the ring very gently and you'll see it kind of wavers there. So, but just on its own merit, it's uh, very good for video, very clear. Alright guys, we've made it to the marsh and there's one red winged blackbird out there which uh, I'm going to get a couple shots of and I've also brought the two times converter and we'll throw that on there and see if we can get uh, a, an okay shot with that as well. So we are shooting at about 1800 millimeters here and I would definitely recommend a two second timer when you're doing that. Uh, shooting at 1 1 25th of a second at uh, 1800 millimeters is probably not advisable without uh, using the timer and proper technique.
Oh, you guys will never be able to see it on my phone, but right there, there are two turtles on that back bank. They've got to be, oh, I don't know, close to 100 feet away from me here. And we're going to use the two times converter to take a shot. And then we're going to try it with the uh, 1.4 in-camera converter as well. So you guys will see both of those pictures. Uh, away out there on that beaver house, there are two mallard ducks. They're just sunning themselves, lying there, and that again is over 100 feet. So we'll do two times converter and the inbuilt converter as well. Well, an airplane just flew by, so we'll see if any of those turn out. Manual focus, and I'm assuming there will be a lot of uh, air distortion because it's so far away, but uh, if we get a clear one, I'll stick that in there as well. And here we've got some lilies right on the side of the path, guys. So, uh, we'll try a macro shot here with the lens. Uh, we're only about seven feet away. And I've got the two times converter on there, so we'll take a few shots of these lilies and see how they turn out. And then of course our red winged blackbird comes right in here when I'm not ready to shoot him. A loud little bugger. Okay guys, I'm just going to give you some final thoughts on this lens before I uh, show you the rest of my samples. Uh, this lens is sharp into the very good range, but not excellent. Uh, you just can't seem to get uh, all the detail I want out of it, and that's because you can't stop it down. You're at f8 and there is no changing that. So it's very good and you can post-process, add some sharpness and bring it up to that excellent range. Um, on the computer, but you won't get it right out of the lens. The other thing is, it, like all old lenses, it lacks a little bit of contrast. So the colors and the contrast uh, in my general workflow with every lens I own get a little boost, and this one is no different. So in terms of versatility though, I haven't had as much fun in the last couple of days shooting with a lens in quite a while. Um, just carrying one lens, you can shoot everything from six feet away up to infinity, and throw a couple of different adapters on there and you've got a range from 500 millimeters right up to uh, about 1800 and some millimeters with a two times lens and an APS-C camera. So uh, versatility wise, excellent. Uh, the, the out of background focus, some images, meh, but I, I like that effect so it doesn't bother me. I own a lot of M42 old uh, lenses that do the same thing and I look for that quality something a little bit different once in a while and The other thing is that this lens is just going to allow you to get shots that you just otherwise can't reach so sharpness and whatnot aside Any shot is better than no shot right guys? So all in all I'm I'm actually very pleased with this purchase and I would recommend picking one up to anybody who uh, Wants to play around in the 500 plus millimeter range that being said uh, you do need good technique guys, a sturdy tripod uh, to get the most out of this lens. So pick one up and have fun and thanks for watching.